we've been going after a lot of fake gurus living in the United States and it's about time we start broadening our horizons. Today's subject lives in the Philippines and believes he is the son of God. Before we look at his criminal behavior, we're going to have some fun watching other guys who also believe they're full of special powers. There have been men, many of them, who claim to be a new messiah. In this ABC News video, we're going to witness multiple people who all think they're the son of God. But what if the second coming is here, now? There are a number of would-be messiahs who claim exactly that. This might be my favorite fake guru of all time. Just look at that stare, he has the act perfected. And few are more physically convincing than a former Russian traffic cop named Sergei Torop. Has there ever been a bigger job promotion than this guy who went from Russian traffic cop to being the son of God? Hollywood spends years writing scripts for superhero movies, and they probably don't realize you have a real life superhero in this video. In the woods of rural Siberia, he is known as Vissarion, the teacher, and around 5,000 disciples live around him, growing their own food and feasting on his every word. And my whole body was trembling. I wish this guy was on the Cameo app so that I could pay to get a shout out and a blessing from the son of our creator for $5. The tremoring ring is not coming again. <laughs> well, it's a, a very emotional to me. If you're like me, your first reaction is probably like, how in the world do people believe in this stuff? One of the biggest weaknesses humans have is we fall victim to cognitive biases where we have a complete lapse of rationality and judgment. A lot of my videos center around fake gurus who have the worst sales pitches, but the reason why they can sell their crap product is because once people want to believe something is true, it's almost impossible to convince them they're wrong. Prove to me that you are a son of God. But that is not a sentiment shared by Pastor Apollo Quibiloy, the most successful of the world's self-labeled saviors. You could argue the biggest fake gurus are the prosperity preachers here in America and guys like Apollo Quibiloy who claim they're the son of God brought down to the earth to save his people. If you haven't seen my video on the prosperity preachers, you have to check it out because these guys are the biggest clowns in society. The official coming of the son of God was in April 13, 2005. Humans are incredibly intelligent. We can build cars, bridges, skyscrapers. We can write software that drives cars. We have someone that can win a Super Bowl at age 43 and someone who has defied the aging process. But somehow, humans can also be deceived in the easiest of ways. In 2021, millions of people still believe that someone standing on stage in front of them can have superpowers that they don't have and that this person receives messages from a mysterious man in the sky. Humans are incredibly complex and also very flawed. He was an obscure evangelist from the rural Philippines until 2005 when he announced that God had appointed him Christ on earth. Just like the prosperity preachers here in America, he figured you can't get the mansions and private jets by being a follower of the guy on stage. You have to turn into the guy who stands on stage. The easiest way to do it is just to say you were sent from God and if you have enough conviction, apparently people will believe you. His reward for a pure life, sinful thoughts, uh, anger lust, any of those things, you don't experience those on a daily basis? As a human being? Yes. I have all, already overcome all of those. Surprise, surprise, the charlatan saying he's the son of God was lying straight to the reporter's face. This guy committed some heinous acts according to the news reports. Mega church leader who calls himself the son of God charged with sex trafficking. Apollo Kibaloy is a close friend of Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. He is the leader of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ Church, which claims to have six million members. This news story was a surprise to me because I've never heard of a religious leader committing criminal acts. I was under the impression that they all had special powers and they all shared their wisdom out of the kindness of their hearts. Yeah, totally kidding. Here's the indictment listing Kibaloy, aka the appointed son of God, as the top defendant in this case. The charges are as follows. Conspiracy to engage in sex trafficking by force, fraud, and coercion, and trafficking of children, marriage fraud, promotional money laundering, concealment money laundering, among other crimes. This is partially a joke, but for the parents out there, which one do you fear most? If I told you your child spent yesterday afternoon alone with a drug dealer or a pastor, have we reached the point where the latter scares you more than the former? A couple things to know, Kibaloy is the pastor of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name. In 1998, the church founded the Children's Joy Foundation, CJF. In 2007, the church began operating CJF in the United States as a registered nonprofit charity. This is why I am here today as the appointed son of God. First of all, chosen from the fallen Adamic race to find the way, and through my freedom of choice, I am here uh, 
being a finished product, an example of all of you. This guy is a cold-blooded charlatan who ruined people's lives and yet still has a following of 6 million people. There are numerous powerful psychological factors at play that lead to someone like this having power and believability. I found an article showing when Americans become Christian. The pie chart indicates that roughly 85% of the members become Christians between the ages of 4 and 14, only 4% of members become Christians past the age of 30. Usually the first thought when seeing these charlatans on stage is how do people believe them? You have people who are indoctrinated into a belief system since they were young. That belief system was reiterated every week and they were never given an opportunity to challenge that belief system because of the manipulative tactics used within the belief system to get believers to think it's the only way to live. This belief system is made stronger because if you obey, you will be given access to utopia. If you disobey, you will be sent to the worst place Place on earth and that guy on stage just happens to be the gatekeeper for determining which path you go down there is no apocalypse in Kibaloi's message no rapture or final judgment instead he preaches that he is the model of Christianity and as more people follow his example God will gradually turn the earth back into the Garden of Eden church administrators brought certain workers from the Philippines to the United States to spend long hours illegally soliciting money for the church outside of businesses across the United States at the direction of church administrators, the workers represented to the public that donated money would be used by CJF to help impoverish children when in fact the money directly financed church operations and the lavish lifestyle of church leaders. This image is the perfect representation of how twisted these charlatans are. He takes donation money to pay for assistance to hold umbrellas on a gloomy day while workers perform hard labor right in front of him as he tries to look all righteous and special. Pastorals were young women within the church who were selected to work as personal assistants for defendant Kibaloi. Pastoral were typically between the ages of 12 and 25. Pastorals prepared defendant Kibaloi's meals, cleaned his residences, gave him massages using lotion, and traveled with him on trips throughout the world to include the United States. Do you perform miracles? For me, the greatest miracle is the changing of that spirit within. Pastorals engaged in sex with defendant Kibaloi on a schedule determined by defendants Kibaloi and Dan Dan in what was referred to by the pastorals as night duty. For some pastorals, night duty began before the pastoral reached the age of 18. But healing the sick, the manifestations oh, yes, of Jesus' yes. powers, you, you, you were able to we do have, that? We have, we have healing. You are healing. healing and miracles happening. Defendant Kibaloi and other church administrators coerced pastorals into having night duty, that is, sex, with Defendant Kibaloi under the threat of physical and verbal abuse and eternal damnation by Defendant Kibaloi and other church administrators. Defendant Kibaloi and other church administrators told pastorals that performing night duty was God's will and a privilege, as well as a necessary demonstration of the pastoral's commitment to give her body to Defendant Kibaloi as the appointed son of God. After taking his place as the appointed son, Kibaloi's ministry has exploded. He claims to reach 6 million followers with his satellite TV network, numerous publications, private jet, and personal helicopter. Pastorals who performed their duties to include night duty to the satisfaction of defendant Kibaloi were rewarded with privileges, including trips to tourist destinations like Disneyland, flights in private jets, use of cell phones, and yearly monetary payments referred to as honorariums by church administrators. All the better to avoid the bumpy road and impoverished villages that lead to the walled compound he calls the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Here, is his five-bedroom home, surrounded by manicured gardens of imported grass. When in the United States, defendant Kibaloi stayed at large residences that he controlled, including residences in Calabasas, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Kapolei, Hawaii. Usually you hear about Americans moving to the Philippines because of the power of the dollar, so you know he was making bank if he was living in the Philippines and buying mansions in Calabasas, Vegas, and Hawaii. Defendant Duenas also handled fraudulent immigration-related documents for church workers, including applying for sham marriages and student visas obtained on behalf of church workers to allow the workers to remain in the United States and solicit funds for the church. The entire operation centered around bringing these kids over from the Philippines to help raise money for the church and charity. To do so, they needed to fake marriages, create fake student visas, and overwork the children in order to raise money for their lifestyle. The church workers were forced to solicit on the streets nearly every day, year-round working very long hours and often sleeping in cars overnight without normal access to over-the-counter medicine and at times sufficient clothing. So this is your Garden of Eden. This is what we call the Garden of Eden Restored. 
It's easy to see why this claim resonates in a country where 30 million endure crushing poverty with open hearts. The reason why spiritual leaders like Kibaloi can gain so much power while being an obvious charlatan is because people who are living in poverty or people looking for answers to life's toughest problems will look to someone who claims to have the solution. To them, heaven really could exist inside Kibaloi's gates, and it's why hundreds line up to carry his parasol. All the workers who toil in the grinding heat of the kingdom are volunteers here to glorify the Father. Do you get paid for this? Uh, Juju tells me he gets $40 a week to feed his family. Defendants Kibaloi and Salinas would retaliate against victims who escaped the church by harassing, threatening, and making allegations of criminal misconduct against the victims. Scientologists are like, we've been doing that for years too. Defendant Kibaloi would give sermons broadcasted to church members around the world in which he would allege that victims who escaped had engaged in criminal conduct and sexually promiscuous activity and therefore faced eternal damnation in order to discourage other victims from leaving, retaliate against, and discredit the victims, and conceal the sexual activity between defendant Kibaloi and the victims. Minimum wage. And like the rest of the kingdom, he's expected to give 10% back to Kibaloi. Kibaloi barely pays his workers any money, and then they're expected to pay back 10% to the church because the belief system they live within manipulates them into doing so. This may be the most beautiful spot in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and it's paid for by people who live on $2 a day. So how do you justify your, your lifestyle? This reporter asks great questions because he sees through the facade just like some of us can. I love the smirk on the assistant's faces because they know their charlatan employer will be confronted with a tough question. I mean, your watch could probably feed 100 families for a month. If this is not God's will for me to have these things I have, yeah. you can take it away. It is God's will that, 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 that we follow. If this is God's will for us to live like this, you know, you can have a broken heart looking at me, but what can you do? God's desires always seem to benefit the pastor. The charlatans I highlighted in my video all speak the same. God wants me to have the private jets. God said I earn the millions of dollars per year. It's all the same rhetoric. In or around 2002, defendant Kibaloi had sex with victim KF when she was approximately 15 years old. In or around 2005, defendant Kibaloi had sex with victim KA when she was approximately 17 years old. But they get their understanding of the will of God from you. Yeah. And this, this nice young man wouldn't be holding this umbrella if he didn't believe the things you say. For us here, we see everything as a ministry. In or around 2009, defendant Kibaloi instructed victim RE to write a commitment letter dedicating herself to defendant Kibaloi after victim RE resisted having sex with defendant Kibaloi. In or around 2009, defendant Kibaloi, while engaging in sex acts with victim RE, told victim RE that the sex acts were in the father's will and that the father was happy over what the son was doing. My talent is to preach. My talent is to be a leader. Not everyone can become a preacher or have been given a talent like me to go and lead the six million people. Right. In or around 2009, defendant Salinas told victim RE that if victim RE was afraid to go near defendant Kibaloi, then victim RE had the devil in her. In or around 2011, defendant Kibaloi had sex with victim KP when she was approximately 14 years old. But Jesus, when he, when he walked the earth, according to the Bible, uh, lived among lepers and prostitutes. I live among, among them. You have a private jet. I live among them. Before I had the you, private you're jet. You're in a walled compound with mansions. This reporter is awesome. He didn't believe a word this predator clown was saying. We, before this, I lived among the, these people. Like for example, that jet that you're talking about. Do you know that in 1983, I had the revelation of that jet? That the Lord is going to give me that. Yeah. It is him who gave me that. If it is not his will, how can I afford that? Well. <laughs> On or about October 12, 2018, defendant Kibaloi gave a recorded sermon in which he publicly accused victim RE of engaging in cybersex and stealing church equipment, publicly accused victim BP of engaging in cybersex, and publicly accused victim KA of stealing a credit card before leaving the church. Kibaloi has been accused of kidnapping and brainwashing by the parents of at least one of his followers, but he was never charged. This video was released on YouTube 11 years ago. Thankfully, he's finally being indicted and hopefully he gets sent to prison. Although, members of cults typically aren't capable of removing the brainwashing, so it's likely he'll still be preaching until he's fully charged. He insists that anyone is free to leave his flock and seal their fate for eternity. Will they go to hell? It's up to them. They know that. 
So that's your will, you know. If you want to go to hell, no one will stop you. If you want to go to heaven and follow this way, no one will stop you to come work with you. Yeah. The reason why I showed the graphic earlier about the age of the people entering Christianity is because modern religion and churches rely on manipulative tactics to keep you involved. Believe in what we believe in and we'll show you the promised land. Exit our group and you will be sent to eternal damnation. If you've been indoctrinated into thinking that this community and group think is the right way to live, then you'll never be fully capable of having objective thoughts about what you're doing. Charlatans like Kibaloy will prey on that for their own benefit. There are three possibilities here. You are so, either the son of God, or you're delusional, or you're a very successful con man. Major props to this reporter for asking him a tough question on his property and under an umbrella held by his assistant. I respect your point of view, but I resent what you said that uh, your followers will say, I'm a con man with a speaking ability that I've tried to con people. That is not who I am. I'm not trying to con people. I am speaking the truth. This guy is most certainly a con man, as is everyone stating they have a superpower. Their superpower is not being the son of God or a messenger from some guy in the sky. Their superpower is manipulating you into believing they have one. Thanks for watching.